Well, good morning. <laughs> it is past time for us to begin this morning. We're a little bit late because we had the song playing, and it just it just came right on, on time, and so we just had to let that song finish. <laughs> so this morning, when the world is against us, is our subject. March the 24th, 2024, we are marching right on out of here. We are almost in April. It, I'm telling you, but, the, but God has been good. God is good. He, he has been wonderful. He is wonderful. Our devotion reading is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. Our background scripture is Acts chapter 6. Our printed text is Acts chapter 6 also. We encourage you to read the entire chapter so you know what's happening before and what's happening after so that you don't walk away with just a little bit of the story. We want you to have the whole story. But we do encourage you to come on out and be a part of our Sunday school, and then you'll get the whole story up close and personal. So we do encourage you to come on out and be with us this morning. Our devotional reading. The priest, the Levi, the priest, the Levi, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire and his inheritance. Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance, as he hath said unto them. And this shall be the priest do from the people. From them that offer sacrifice, whether it be ox or sheep, and they shall give unto the priest the shoulder and the two cheeks and the maw. The first fruits also of thy corn, of thy wine, of thine oil, and the first of the fleece of thy sheep shall thou give them. Give him, for the Lord thy God have chosen him out of all the tribes to stand to minister in the name of the Lord, him and his sons forever. And if a Levi come from any gate out of all of Israel where he is sojourned and come with all the desire of his mind unto a place which the Lord shall choose, then he shall minister in the name of the Lord his God as all his brethren, the Levites do, which stand there before the Lord. They shall have like portions to eat beside that which cometh of the sale of his patrimony. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall be no found, no found, there shall be, there shall not be found among you <laughs> anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that useth divination or an, observe, uh, an observer of times and an enchanter or a witch, or a charmer or a counsel with familiar spirits, or a wizard or a neo rancher. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from, among, from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For this nation which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of time and unto divers. And But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. Let us pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to travel up and down these dangerous highways safely. Father, we thank you for allowing us to come here at Mount Zion one more time. And Lord, we thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. Lord, we just thank you because you've been so good to us, Father. You brought us from last Sunday all the way up until this very present moment. Lord, you brought us that far. And Lord, we say thank you. Because at any time you could have taken any one of us, Father, but you saw fit that we see another day. And Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to open up, open up our eyes, Father, and to see the dawning of a brand new day. Lord, we say thank you. We thank you for allowing us to get out of our beds, Father. We thank you. We thank you for allowing us to breathe, Father. We thank you for allowing us to have the mind to take a bath and put on clean clothes and to come out and worship your holy and righteous name. Lord, we say thank you. Because you didn't have to do any of that, but you did. And, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for being just that kind of God. Father, you've been better than good to all of us. And, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. We just thank you for the activity of our limbs. And, Father, and Father, we thank you for our pastor. Father, we are still standing in intercession for our pastor, Father. We are calling you on your word, Father. You said in your word that by your stripes we are healed. And, Father, we're calling you on your word, Father. And we just say thank you because we know you can. And, Father, we have the faith to know that you can. And, Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you for being just that kind of God. Father, you don't have to do anything, but you do. And we say thank you. 
thank you for being just that kind of God. Lord, we thank you for the Sunday school lesson. Let it sing down in our hearts so that we might be more doers of your word and not just hearers only, Father. Help us to go out and compel people to come and learn that you are God and God all by yourself, that you are the sustainer, that you are the provider, Father. Help us, Father. Go out and compel those people to come. To come, Father. Help us with the people in our own house, Father, that to compel them to come out and learn what a great God you are. Father, help us to be the people that you want us to be so that when we go in our homes and we go to our jobs and we go into Walmart or wherever we go, Father, that our light shine, Father, that they may see a difference in us that, that's not in the world. Father, we just say thank you. Father, we thank you for the teaching of our pastor, Father. Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the teacher that's going to stand here this morning, Father. We just thank you. Open up our hearts and our minds so that we can receive everything that you have for us this day. Lord, we just thank you. Father, continue to bless the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, 660 Highway 79 South in Magnolia, Arkansas, right across the street from Walker School. Father, bless this church, and Lord, we say thank you. These are another blessing we ask in thy son, Jesus' name, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. morning uh while we're getting ready y'all will turn over to uh acts chapter six who would have just said we got to know what happened before and sheila so sheila said we need to know what's going on because the lesson starts at verse seven we need to find out what was going on before verse seven y'all pray for me this morning i done left my sunday school book at the house because i ain't say her off to go get it for me i appreciate you angel that was so sweet uh <laughs> I'm going to truly rely on him <laughs> because I, every note I got is at the house. <laughs> I'm going to truly rely on him. All right. Yeah, he him. He him. He can fix it. Okay. Unit one, faithful versus faithless. The subject is entitled, When the World is Against Us. Ms. Martha said, we sure enough got trouble now because the world show against us. That's what Ms. Martha said a while ago. World against us, y'all. Christians, it's against us. Y'all yeah. know it. Come on now. The world is against us. Yes, ma'am. They're, they're against us. They're against Christians. The real Christians, not church folk Christians. They're against us. All right. Now, the key verse says, there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians and of them of Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Stephen, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. That's Acts 6, verses 9 and 10. All right, now, let's get started. Acts chapter 6, verse 1. Early church period. In those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. All right. First recorded problem in the new church. First recorded problem in the new church. Right there. Ain't that right, Pastor? First recorded problem. All right. Y'all know how we do. If, if you ain't mighty careful. Y'all say that all the time. If you ain't mighty careful. We'll sit back and we'll watch and look like sister so-and-so getting a little more praise. If we ain't careful now, sister so-and-so getting a little more praise. Pastor call uh, mother so-and-so name a little bit more than he called your mama name. Uh, your mama was usher for 30 years. They didn't, never did give your mama a plaque, but they're giving sister Maddie a plaque. Uh, you know, if we ain't careful now, if we ain't careful, that we ain't careful. Y'all leave that alone, leave that alone, Lily. <laughs> Y'all ain't careful. That, that, what, that what happened? That what happened? So people is, instead of getting into the service and trying to get the salvation that is being offered, you got those that's looking around finding fault. We got that here. If we ain't mighty careful. You ain't mighty careful. So they look and they say, well, now, so on these uh, other way, they getting they getting the daily ministrations, the handouts, and what they need. Look like I, they ain't doing ours right. We gotta speak up for us. <laughs> Somebody said something. We gonna speak up for us. We ain't getting our fair share. We gotta do something. Then the twelve. What twelve? Oh, okay. All twelve. The original twelve. Well, where where was one at? 
Why is, if Judas is gone, that was 11. Why is that 12? Oh, they appointed. Oh, okay, that was in Acts chapter what, one or two. I can't remember. They appointed, what's his name? Matthias. Wasn't that his name? Yeah. There I go to 12. There I go to 12. It's important that we know that because Judas is gone. He's committed suicide. So now Matthias is in his place. So the 12, they called the multitude of the disciples to him and said, listen here, it don't make sense that we got to stop preaching, stop saving, saving souls to serve the table. This don't make sense. Then he give them, he give them something to do. He said, now, brethren, look ye out among you in the congregation. Look out among you in this congregation and find seven men. Why seven? Come on, Bible scholars. Seven is the number of completion. Y'all sure? Okay, I'll take y'all word for it. <clears throat> that is the number of completion right in the scripture. He said, find seven men of honest report. Full, full, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. See, you can't just appoint anybody <laughs> to handle out, handle out, you know, ministration. You just can't appoint anybody. Everybody ain't honest. Come on now. Look, look at how you do if you ain't, we ain't careful when, it, when we're eating. If you ain't careful in the kitchen when you're eating. If you ain't careful, so and so cook that, put that back. We'll put out, we'll put out to eat, we'll put out to eat Walmart cake. Mother Hanson cooked this, we're gonna get it home. <laughs> if you ain't mighty careful. <laughs> if you ain't mighty careful. So you can't just pick any and everybody to handle church business. So that's why he told them, men of honest report. Ain't keeping up a bunch of mess. You ain't hearing the name lying about this, lying about that. They got a good name to them. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. They got to have some knowledge because wisdom is the way you apply the knowledge that you get. That's what wisdom is. You got the knowledge, but you got to know how to apply the knowledge. So that's where wisdom comes in. So he said they got to be full of the spirit, got to be of honest report, and got to be have wisdom that we can appoint over this business. And But we, in verse 4, we, the apostles, the preachers, said, hey, Keith, hey, baby. <laughs> said, Keith said, uh, not Keith, you didn't say that, did you? But the, he said that we'll give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. He said, that's what we're going to do. We, you appoint them over, and we can do our job now, which is to offer salvation and to teach others about who Jesus is and the sacrifice that he made. Remember, this is the new church. So we can do that now. And the saying, please the whole multitude. Ain't that something? Because you can't hardly please everybody at church. But ain't that something? Whole trip just, just was happy with it. <laughs> and they chose Stephen, a man full, full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte, which means simply a convert of Antioch. When they, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, notice that they just tell, you do this, and just turn them loose. They prayed first. Then they laid the hands on them like an anointing. This is what your job is to do. Now, these seven men, let's go here. Are these, is this the, the, the story about deacons? Really? No, no, ma'am. No, man, that's not where it came from. No, man. No, man, that's not where it came from. Deacons are discussed in, what is it, Titus? Yeah, Timothy. Timothy or Titus. I can't remember which one it is. Timothy. Deacons, the office of deacons are discussed in the book of Timothy. This was simply seven men that was just ordered to just wait table. That's what, that's, that's what pastor and job. That was their job. That was their job, just to give out the daily ministration. That was their job. Now, Stephen was saved. Remember, he was full. He's full. He's full. <laughs> so he didn't just give out. He talked about Jesus. He talked about Jesus. He talked about it. Now, we're going to get on that. Now, we're going to get into verses 7 through 11. And the first outline is entitled, A Formidable Witness. What does the word formidable mean? Forceful? Yes. 
strong, strong, viable, forceful witness. All right, all right. Verses 7 through 11. Anybody read that for me, please? Please. Yes, ma'am. All right, verse 7, start out with what the topics, what the uh, commentary said. Got a good progress report. Good progress report. Re it's in there. Read it, read it, read it. It, it, it said uh, the word of God increased. The number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Not just a little bit. A lot of them it multiplied greatly. And many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Answered that call. So now, once it was set in order, People had jobs to do. Everybody did their job. What happened to the church? The church increased. Y'all get that? Everybody in their own lane doing their own job. I say this all the time. I don't mind singing up there in the choir. I'm not no leader. I'm a backgrounder. I'm not a leader. Every once in a while, D.D. will talk me into it, but I'm not a leader. That ain't my thing, Keisha. I know that ain't my thing. So why am I going to run over Sister Martha or Sister Sandra? I want to sing this song, lead this song, today, I will lead it. Then you look like an idiot when the song don't go over well. <laughs> don't nobody stand up while you sing it. Then you go home mad because <laughs> they, they didn't stand up while you were singing. I done took the song from Cassie. No wonder they didn't stand up. <laughs> come on, come on now, y'all. All right, all right. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. All right, the word of God spread. And Stephen, the one that did the witnessing, Witnessing, full, full, that's the word, of faith, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Here comes some more mess. And what you say, ain't it? Uh, Mr. Octavius said, as usual. There arose certain of the church, synagogue, Jewish word, what is it for us? Church. Church. Thank you, Sister Sheila. Church folks. Here come the church folks. Several groups of them. Several groups of them. And they decided, no, we don't really like what he's saying. Let's, let's, let's go talk to him. Let's go talk to him. Because, see, he don't, <laughs> I think we can take it. I think we, it's several of us. It's about four or five groups of us. I think we can take it. Let's just go on over there and let's see what he got to say. Come on, come on, y'all. Let's go on over there. Then they get over there and go to disputing with him in verse 9. And then verse 10, they wasn't even able to fight against him with his wisdom. See, he had a lot of knowledge. Remember, he had a lot of knowledge. But wisdom shows you how to use the knowledge that you've learned. That's what wisdom does. Okay, that's what wisdom does. So now all these different sects of folks, that four or five different groups now, four or five. Hey, Miss Lee, four or five different groups. They can't take down one man about Jesus, allegedly about Jesus. Because it doesn't tell us what they were talking about now. Don't tell us what they were talking about. That says a lot about him because he was full. Y'all get that? Full of the Holy Ghost. So they couldn't take him down. He was what? He was prepared. Yeah, he knew the word. Do we know the word? That, that be real sometimes, but I don't need it. <laughs> well, what about that we know? <laughs> it ain't, oh, it ain't enough. Lily said it ain't enough. They weren't able to resist his wisdom. Then, because they weren't able to resist his wisdom, what they do? They go get some folk. They go persuade some folk. You know how we do. If we ain't careful, <laughs> y'all know how we put that in there. If we ain't careful. They go get some witnesses. And they have him to say, you know, we done heard him speak blasphemy. He been real, he been real disrespectful <coughs> to Moses and the church. He been just as disrespectful as he can be. So we, 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 we done heard it. We done heard him speak against God, and we done heard him speak against Moses. Now, let me tell you something. 
the right lie told by the right person at the right time can wreak havoc. Then what I said now, the right lie told by the right person at the right time can really cause some problems. Oh, but God. Y'all hear me? Oh, but God. Let me give you an example. When we was adopting my daughter, Rocky, I don't know, some of you may have heard it. There's that preacher we're going with. That's what they said, Cass. That preacher was going with her. I was going to have grandchildren and stepchildren. That's what they said. <laughs> some of them were family. They said, keep, keep some of them family. <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> the right lie. Like to ruin his reputation. Oh, but God. Y'all hear me? Oh, but God. Oh, but God. Because, see, when they kept on messing with that little daughter of mine, that is rep God, that's him, it's him. I heard she sitting in his lap in the pulpit. Really? Okay, whatever. <laughs> when she did talk and told who it was, they wanted everybody to be quiet then. <laughs> well, be quiet. I won't talk about it. <laughs> the right lie. The right lie. But God. You better say that again. Granny said, if he for you, who can be against you? He's more than the whole world. Ain't that what the word said? I won't make sure that's what it said. I won't say nothing he didn't say. But then they done lied on it. Now, that's verses 7 through 11. Did we miss anything? Thank you, ma'am. Amen. Now, I don't know why. Must have been a reason for that to be read through. That's the way I look at it. That's the way I look at it. Y'all can look at me crazy if you want to. That's the way I look at it. Must have been a reason. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Now, the second outline is entitled, A Marked Witness. What's marked? What's marked? Select. Point it out. Point it out. Select. Okay, now, he was a formidable one now. He, he, he was strong, forceful. That's what y'all said to me. Now you say he what, Lily? He pointed out. Still talking about Stephen? Okay. Verses 13, I mean verses 12 through 15. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, this man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place, and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. All right. They couldn't get him one way. They tried, Miss Cass. Hey, oh, they tried. They lied. They lied. <laughs> they tried. So they said, well, now I'll tell you what. The lies didn't work. Let's stir up the folk. Oh, you know how we do it. We ain't careful. <laughs> you know how we do it. Did you see that? Girl, I wasn't going to say nothing. But did you see it? Yeah, girl, I seen it. I seen it. Well, see, we're going to have to go to the pastor about this because, we, I, I, girl, I ain't going to be able to. Girl, he ain't going to do nothing. He ain't going to do nothing. He ain't going to do nothing. You got to take care of that yourself, girl. And before you know it, if you ain't mighty careful, <laughs> you don't just be done done it yourself. You done grab some folks to get care with you. <laughs> that way we do. You know, you always got to have a witness in your mess. You always got to have somebody with 
you, you have somebody with you. You know how what they say they do, those that come in to tear up the church, they, they get by off by themselves with somebody else. Oh. Ain't that what it said the other week we were t- t- in this lesson? Those that want to tear up the church, they always get with somebody else that, that's just like-minded like them. <laughs> you understand know what I'm saying? They don't go to no Christian, Miss Lee. They don't go to church folk. Somebody like-minded like them. So they stirred up the people, the elders, the scribes, came upon him and caught him and took him to the Sanhedrin council. The same folks. <coughs> the same folks that went after Jesus. That's where they took him. Set up false witnesses. Found some folks to lie. Found some. It ain't hard to find. Y'all know they ain't. They ain't hard to find. Especially if it's a mess. It ain't hard to find at all if it's a mess. <laughs> found some folks to lie. Then they said he, Jesus said what he was going to do. He didn't say that. He didn't say he was going to destroy this place. He said if. I if. Preposition. Prepositional phrase. If. Then. If this happened. Then. That's what he said. But they lied on him. They lied. They lied and said that's what he said. Now, first of all, when you think about it, if you really know what you were, once speaking of the church, he said, look at God, praise God. Once speaking of the church itself, he was talking about his body, what was going to happen at Calvary. That's what he was talking about, because who is the church? Jesus is. Yeah. That's what he was talking about. But see, people that are simple-minded, yeah. don't read your Bible, have no idea what's going on, you'll believe anything. You'll believe anything. Look at what, look at Folks that you kind of used to halfway respect since Donald Trump was in office and on his way back. So folks, you just didn't even think. Come on, y'all looking at me crazy. Some of the folks you work with, white people, you work with, white people, you work with, never would have thought it. They showed you exactly who they were. Even got some of us. I'm going to leave that one. <laughs> All right. They set up false witnesses. Said that he said this man he won't stop. If he ain't talking about the church, he talking about Moses. We done heard it. Listen now, lying. We heard him every time he turned around. He said something bad about Moses, what the Moses of law or the church. He said something bad all the time. He trying to take away the things where it used to be. That's what he trying to do. No, he wasn't introducing you. To the one. And that one is Jesus. That one was Jesus. Now, he didn't teach that the law don't need it. He didn't say that. He came to fulfill the law. Didn't tell you to scrap it. He came to fulfill the law. So these people are standing up here lying on this man. They're talking about Jesus, doing signs and wonders, lying, saying, hey, 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 turn around. He, he blasphemed. Every time I turn around, he blasphemed. He blasphemed. We done heard it. We done heard it. Now, get this. When God is on your side, who can be against you? He is more than the whole world against you. Now, get this. Why are they talking? Lying, keeping up men, probably writing notes. I don't know. I wasn't there. But you know how we do. Probably writing notes. They look at him, and what do they see? A marked witness. Y'all get that? A marked witness. It's like God said, oh, <laughs> I got my seal of approval on him. Is he got his seal of approval on you? Do your face shine? Not literally. Y'all know what I mean. Symbolically, do your face shine? Ain't nobody saying nothing. Do your face shine? You know him so well. <laughs> you know him so well. Now, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes my light shine real, 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 real good now. now. Then sometimes it's a little dim, Miss Reba. <laughs> it's a little dim sometimes, like the light bulb trying to go out. <laughs> it was. I may be real. Let me be real for one needle. For one needle. Because, see, he's been talking to us about faith. He's been letting us know that we all have some doubt. <laughs> So Juanita's being honest. My light just is bright sometimes, but this weekend, Lord, with my mother and my grandmother, it was just barely flickering sometimes. <laughs> it barely flickering sometimes. <laughs> barely, <laughs> barely flickering. 
Y'all hear me barely flicker. But God said, I'm going to put my mark on this man that's standing up for me. Now, there's somebody else in the scripture whose face shone like that. Who was that? Come on, y'all. Who was this other person in the scripture whose face shone like that? Well, no, okay, G, okay, all right. Somebody is not Jesus. Let me put it like that. There's another person in the scripture whose face shone like that. Moses. Same one that they say he was blaspheming and talking about. Same, see, that's see how God will bring it full circle and make you look like an idiot if you ain't careful. <laughs> you hear that? The same one that they lied on him about, God used the same tactic that he used with Moses, which I believe was in Exodus chapter 30-something, 30 32, 33, 34. Read it if you're interested. Go find it and read it. 34, thank you. 34. Same thing, same tactic that he used with Moses in the Old Testament, he did in the New Testament with Stephen. What does Solomon say? There's nothing new. Now, if he'll mark Stephen, I'm sorry, let's put it, if he'll mark Moses, and then he'll mark Stephen, he'll mark you. He'll mark us. But we've got to be willing. That's what Sister Sheila said, we've got to be willing. See, you can't be full today <laughs> unless tomorrow. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. That's why we have to constantly pray. Increase our faith. Then if you want to get personal about it, when just you and him talking, increase my faith. What did the pastor tell us to do? Admit that I'm weak here sometimes. Sometimes I got doubt. I'm weak. So I need you to increase my faith. You, it's got to be personal. You ask him to increase your faith. And when he does increase your faith, because he'll give you what you're asking for, especially when it concerns him. When he does increase your faith, when he does increase your faith, when he does increase your faith, then you can be a mark witness. Just like him. Be a marked witness. Now I'm going to ask again. Are you marked? Are you marked? Sister Lily says sometimes. Are you marked? Okay, let me go back. Are you a formidable witness? Can't nobody make you doubt him? Because you know too much about him? <laughs> you wanted him? Now that ain't just one of them in church on Sunday now, isn't it? Stand up under pressure. Yeah. What pressure? Oh, Miss Martha said the world is against us, didn't she? Miss Martha did just say that. The world is against us. So if I'm formidable, I can stand up against the world against me through Christ, because can't do it on my own. Can't do it on my own. You know you're smart, but you can't do it on your own. Through the Spirit, because you got to be full. <laughs> full. F-U-L-L. -L. Full. Of the Holy Ghost. Got to be full of the Holy Ghost. Then I can be a formidable witness. And then when I stand up for him, like I'm supposed to, then he'll put his seal of approval on me, Mr. Lee. Miss Joanne, he'll put his seal of approval on me and say, that's my child right there. In other words, the Lord just dropped the mic. <laughs> that was a mic drop moment because he's speaking for me. And even though it may not have turned out the way we thought it should have, they killed Stephen. Read your Bible, they killed him. But all who stood up for him. He got up, didn't he? He was seated and he got up. He said, because they always said when he stood up, he mean business. <laughs> Jesus stood up for this man. He was no longer seated at the right hand of his son. He stood up. Why? Because he was a marked, formidable, marked witness. So Jesus himself said, let me stand up. Yo, you can kill him. Go ahead and kill the body. But all his soul will belong to me. You know, go ahead and kill the body. Remember what he talking about? Remember, remember Job? Do whatever you want. Just don't kill him. Y'all remember Job? Do whatever you want. Just don't kill him. But this was different. He allowed him to be killed. He allowed him to be the first Christian martyr of the new church. He allowed that. But he changed positions 
when they were stoning him, he got up from seated at the right hand and stood up. Ain't it something when he stand up for us? Ain't it, I'm sorry, isn't it something when he stands up for us? Thank you, Ms. Walker. Ain't it something when he stand up for us? When you know he got your back. I mean, can't nobody tell you he ain't got your back? Can't nobody convince you that he ain't got you? Oh, because I promise you, he'll stand up for you. You got to belong to him. He'll stand up for you. He'll stand up for you. So I'm going to say this in closing. When he went to Calvary, because <laughs> Granny said, if you don't say nothing about Calvary, you ain't did nothing. You ain't taught no Sunday school. That's what she said. You ain't taught no Sunday school. You ain't preached no sermon. That's what, that's what, that's what our grandmother, Mother Hannah said. You ain't preached no sermon. You ain't taught no Sunday school. All you did was make a good address speech. That's all you did. So now because of Calvary, what he did at Calvary, I can be now a formidable witness. And go be. Most time am. Let me just be real now. Most time I am. And when I am that formidable witness, because of what he did at Calvary, and because I accepted the sacrifice that he did at Calvary, now he said, let me show everybody that one needle is mine. Let me mark one needle. He'll mark you too. He'll put his mark on you. And I ain't talking about like he did at Cain. <laughs> and I sure ain't talking about the three sixes. I'm talking about the mark from God himself Amen. that lets the whole world know you belong to me. Yeah. Run over if you want to. It's okay. Remember Isaiah said no weapon formed again. Didn't say a weapon wasn't formed. Never said it wasn't formed. Never said folks wouldn't be out to get you. Never said folks wouldn't lie on you. Never said sometimes that your own family. Never said that. He said it would not prosper. That's what he said. That's what he said, that it will not prosper. So remember that. He went to Calvary and gave you the right and the honor to be a formidable Amen. witness. Amen. And then his thanking you for being a formidable witness is him marking you. God bless you. We want to thank Sister Juanita for an awesome lesson this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You did an awesome job. You know, they are, every Sunday they get up here and say they're all nervous and scared. Well, I'm glad they say they're nervous and scared because it tells me that they studied. But then they get up here and they really do an outstanding job. And I, I thank you all so much. That lets us know that you study because you're able to go before and tell us after. And so we do thank you. Um, we all should be like... Stephen, we should be a martyr for Christ. That includes our character. We should be able to stand up. It doesn't matter. If Jesus went through it, what makes me more that I can't go through it? Because he, he, he was the ultimate sacrifice for me. So, but that's something for us to think about. Our next Sunday, our lesson is life, be, life beyond death. Our devotional reading is Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 through 14, uh, 21 through 23, 26 through 31. Our background script is Mark chapter 16. Our printed text is also Mark chapter 16. Again, if anybody does not have a Sunday school book, if you'll let us know, we'll get you one. Those out there in media land, if you don't have a Sunday school book and you would like one, please message the church, call the church, and we'll be sure to get you a Sunday school book. We thank you all for being with us, and we hope to see you again on next Sunday.